Thank you for joining us for a new episode of our I Speak Electric. Today, we're going to hit the pause button and take stock of where we are with EV charging halfway through 2021 and what's coming up. My name is Martin Lee. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss a show. It's worth taking a step back just for a moment and remind ourselves that the notion of an EV isn't new. Although there's so much news around it at the minute, they've really taken hold in terms of media coverage, but we've had EVs since the late 1800s. There were fleets of hansoms, or taxis to you and I, around that time. EVs were easier to start easier to drive, no cranking to get the engine going, no stubborn gear shifts, and they sure as hell smelt a lot better than early combustion cars. But these days, technology has advanced at a rapid pace, and we are no longer surprised at a car that can go 400 kilometers without stopping and recharging at above 200 kilowatts. That's insanely fast compared to a few years ago. Most EVs will take seven kilowatts on an AC charger at home. That's like your standard baseline. So if you're looking at an EV, it's gonna charge at seven kilowatts on AC at home. Maybe some AC posts you can find at destinations when you're out and about. The latest cars coming out will take maybe 11 and sometimes 22 as well. And so that's worth looking out for. But the real fun is happening in DC fast charging. Going beyond 50 kilowatts was impressive a couple of years ago. Today, we're only really impressed by something like the new Tesla Model S Plaid or the Hyundai Ioniq 5 Kia EV6 Porsche Taycan, charging from 230 to 270 kilowatts. But things won't stop there. US customers are eagerly awaiting the Hummer EV. That has a gigantic battery of around 200 kilowatt hours. They say charging speeds over 300 kilowatts. Now, even today, electric ferries becoming more common. They have batteries that will charge at over a megawatt. That makes these speeds look puny. But a battery accepting a lot of energy is only one half of the puzzle. Of course, you need the cars, the batteries with a high enough C rate, but of course, you also need the chargers often called a chicken and egg situation. The latest units being rolled out in the likes of motorway services all around the world, if they have the CCS combo plug, they often go up to 350 kilowatts. Yes, they're future-proofed, but for how long? And we're seeing chargers like this in hubs now with multiple units capable of recharging the latest cars in a matter of minutes, of going to 80% charge in 20 minutes of adding 100 miles in five minutes. And to feed these hubs of high power chargers, work is being done on making our grids more robust to deliver that amount of power. Either that, or we're seeing an increasing amount of battery storage on site, <laughs> normally both. Next, we'll look at motorsport. Any of us into motorsport over the years have been hugely impressed by the technology in those sports like Formula One. Then, a few years later, we noticed it being rolled out in passenger cars around the world as well. In fact, one of the Formula One terms, the kinetic energy recovery, KERS. If you buy an MG electric car, they'll even call their regen. Curse. So those names tend to work their way into the cars that we buy. Now we can watch some captivating pure electric motorsports. And so we wonder how long it'll take for that technology to filter into the cars that you and I drive. Take Extreme E. It's a new racing series for 2021 featuring off-road SUVs, twin motors, peak output of 400 kilowatts from a 54 kilowatt hour battery. These race cars, as the name suggests, are extreme and they race in extreme conditions around the world. But the point is, the technology is being pushed and developed in terms of harnessing the energy and charging these vehicles in extreme remote circumstances. Let's bring things back from Extreme E now to look at the cars you and I uh, drive and will be driving in the future and maybe aspiring to drive. Let's take a look at the charging networks and we bring that up because of how crucial they are to enabling mass electric mobility. Take the success of Tesla. There's no doubt that they make 
energy efficient cars. They have excellent software, but one of their best attributes has to be the supercharger network. So user friendly, you just turn up, plug in and walk away. They always work and they're located often in convenient locations and have superb coverage, not everywhere. I know there's work to be done, it's still so good. Charging networks like this will make it easy to drive across continents and leave people with a sense of freedom that owning their own car can bring. So far, we've talked about individual cars, charging solutions and advances in technology. And as much as you and I love electric vehicles, the push for greater electrification in transport uh, demands the support of governments in 2021 and forward thinking companies around the world. It's obvious to us that EVs are just better in every way. They're more efficient, they're cheaper to run, they're more fun to drive, but we also need the support of those that make the rules, governments and those rolling out charging networks, encouraging hotels, cinemas, shopping centers to install banks of charges at an appropriate speed and an appropriate charging level for us, the customers. And let's finish on a note that views EVs and charging as part of well, let's say a larger ecosystem. Today, halfway through 2021, our EVs have become much more than a means of private transportation. We need EV and charging to serve a bigger purpose. And we can charge school buses with green energy overnight. And that helps balance the grid because they can feed back into the grid during the day. And school buses are a great example because they run very predictable routes. And often during the day, they're just an energy source sitting parked up. We need products like the juice lamp that's not just a street light, but houses two 22AC EV chargers, adaptive lighting, traffic cameras, environmental monitors and connectivity. Now the progress to date and in 2021 has been exciting, but there's a lot more to come. And that's what we're excited about on this channel. As always, we want to hear from you now. What do you think of the state of electric vehicles charging the ecosystem in 2021? Is it good enough? Is it where you thought we would be if you've been thinking about this for a while? If you're new to EVs, what do you make of it all? What technology are we sorely lacking? If you think it's poor, what stops progress? Let us know what you think. Let's keep the conversation going. I love to read those comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like what we did today, give us a thumbs up so we know to make more shows just like this one. And we'll see you on the next one.